Hello and welcome to lecture 8 of financial statement analysis on valuation part 1. This is the second part of our lecture and I'm going to be doing a demonstration of the price multiples and dividend discount model using Gale Pacific. I've opened up the Gale Pacific spreadsheet and we're going to start by looking at calculating some price multiples for Gale Pacific. So what I've done to get us set up is I've taken the sales revenue, net profit and book value of equity. I've taken the actual 2019 numbers, that is the historical financial statement numbers. So I have linked to the numbers from our reformatted financial statements that I've already calculated previously. And then the sales revenue, net profit and book value of equity, I have linked to the forecasting tab where we have forecast the 2020 values for these. Now, when we do price multiples, often we just look at historical information. But analysts will also look at their forecast future numbers and look at the same price multiples using the forward ratios. So the terminology that gets used is a trailing ratio. A trailing ratio refers to last year's historic information, and a forward ratio is calculating the ratio in the same way, but using next year's forecast figures. So I'm going to do it both ways here for Gale Pacific. So I've got the revenues, profits, and book value of equity from my already known financial statement data. And I've also used our forecast template that we did a couple of weeks ago to get the sales revenue, net profit, and book value of equity forecast for 2020. I've gone on to just the Yahoo Finance website or the ASX website and found the current share price at an extra data. It's currently trading at 14.5 cents. I've looked at the Gale Pacific financial statements, the 2019 annual report to find the number of shares. So if I open that up for us, a good place to find the number of shares that your company has outstanding is in the earnings per share note, because companies have to provide an earnings per share calculation for you. In that calculation, they're going to tell you how many shares they have available. So they'll do it two ways and they'll use what's called the basic earnings per share and also the diluted earnings per share, which will take into account if the company has options or warrants outstanding as well. I've just used the basic earnings per share. And I said for 2019, Gale Pacific have this amount of shares. Now, when I put this number into my spreadsheet, you'll see I've changed the unit. The numbers in the Gale Pacific annual report are all expressed in thousands. And the number of shares they just gave us there was actually the total number. So I've had to remove the last few digits. I've put the decimal point here so that this number is now expressed in thousands, like our sales revenue, profit, and book value of equity are. So we're comparing the same amount of units there. So the market capitalization, what I've calculated here is I've multiplied the current share price by the number of shares outstanding to get the market cap, or for these formulas, it's gonna be the price figure that we use. So let's have a look at these formulas. The price to earnings ratio, the PE ratio, I'm gonna use the trailing data. I'm going to say is equal to market capitalization is the price that you would pay to buy the whole company. So the price refers to the market capitalization. So market capitalization divided by, when we talk about earnings, we mean the net profit. Price divided by net profit is the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. Now to make my life a little bit simpler, I'm going to put the dollar signs into the formula there. Okay, so that when I select this and I drag it across, my forward ratio is next year's forecast profit divided by that same current market capitalization. So I did the absolute referencing just so I could drag the formula across and the market capitalization number was still referring to the same number. The price to sales ratio, I'm gonna take the market capitalization and I'm going to divide it by my sales revenue. The price to book ratio, I'm gonna take the price and I'm gonna divide it by the book value of equity. So the price to book ratio, when they refer to book value, they mean, look at the balance sheet, what is the book value of owner's equity? So we're comparing the market value of equity to the book value of equity. Okay, so I've calculated those for the trailing, I'm gonna drag it across to get the forward ratios. All right, so I've now calculated a few ratios for Gale Pacific. What do these mean? Well. The price to earnings ratio using historic last year's data is 4.5. That means if we owned this company, we would expect after owning it for 4.5 years, 
the profit that the company has earned will equal to the market capitalization. Now, a price to earnings ratio of 4.5, if we looked and compared to industry averages or market averages, is very low. A low price to earnings ratio could mean two things. It could be great news. Maybe we've got a really good buying opportunity. This company is a bargain. Or it might be bad news that investors think the uh, the earnings of the company, the profits, are likely to decrease in the future. If I look at the forward ratio, because I have forecast that their profits are going to decrease, the price to earnings ratio starts increasing a little bit. Now, that's some just average numbers. In Australia, the price to earnings ratios have generally been trading between 10 and 20 for the last uh, couple of years. So having a price to earnings ratio below 10 is definitely on the low side. So it could be a great buying opportunity or it could be pricing in the fact that people expect the earnings of this company to continue decreasing in the future. The price to book ratio is also something we need to have a look at. We briefly mentioned this in our accounting analysis. Gale Pacific think the net value of their assets is worth 90 million. But investors in the stock market only think the company is worth 41 million. This could mean we've got a bargain. We can buy the company for 40 million and they've got assets worth 90 million. We could just buy the company out for 40 million, sell all the assets for 90 million and capture our $50 million profit. Or it could indicate that investors don't believe the value of the assets are accurately reported. Maybe Gale Pacific will have large impairments into the future, or maybe the business will continue using these assets, but generating returns lower than their cost of capital, so destroying the asset value. So this low market capitalization compared to their book value of equity could indicate a bargain, or it could indicate a company that's accounting is overly optimistic and investors don't believe the net asset value. You'd need to do further research to try and figure out which side of the fence you sit on there. So that's it for calculating our price multiples. If you wanted to use these for valuation, you'd want to go and look at competitor multiples or industry averages and see where Gale Pacific sit. And based on these low ratios for this particular company, you'd be trying to evaluate, is it a bargain to buy or is it priced in for future poor performance? That would be the key decision you'd have to make based on these ratios here. Now we're going to look at the dividend discount model. And down in the tabs here, I've set up the dividend discount model three different ways. I'm going to go through the three different terminal value calculations. For your assignment, you only do one terminal value calculation, but as a demonstration, I'm showing you how to do it the three different ways. So I've set up the, the basis of our spreadsheet here. To start with, I've got an estimated cost of capital here, and in there I've, I've put in a little formula. I've applied the capital asset pricing model, which we'll talk more about in week 10. If you want to start your valuations for your assignment now, you could just put in any estimates such as 8 or 9%, a number like that for your cost of capital estimate to build your model. And then in week 10, when we learn about the capital asset pricing model and other cost of capital estimations, you can then change this number and have everything update automatically. I've put a growth in terminal value. In this estimation, I'm using a terminal value of zero. So I'm not going to use that number, but that will be used when I have a terminal value with perpetuity or perpetuity with growth. So I've used the 2018 and 2019 actual numbers, and then we've got the forecasts here. We don't actually need any of the actual numbers in the model. I've just put it here so we can see some of the historic dividend payments compared to our forecast, but we're not actually going to use these numbers in the valuation model. So for the forecast dividend, how do I forecast my dividends? Well, we've already done that in our forecasting template. So I'm going to go to my forecasting template here and the 2020 forecast, I've got a calculate net payments to, uh, to shareholders or the little d. That is my dividend. So I'm going to select all these numbers for my forecast dividends. Okay, so I've selected the 2020 dividend and I'm going to drag it across. So I now have my dividend forecast for the future years. The next line says discount factor. This is how we're going to apply our present value calculation. And I'm doing the present value calculation in different steps. So it makes it nice and easy for us to do. To calculate the discount factor, this is the step to do the net present value calculation. It's going to look like this. I'm going to say one plus our cost of equity capital to the power of however many time periods. 2020 is one time period away. 2021 is two time periods away. So I'm going to do to the power of number of years I have to discount it back. 
Now, before I drag this formula along, I want to use this same 7.6% cost of capital for every year. So I'm going to put in the dollar signs to do the absolute reference. Then as I drag it along, I now have my discount factor or my present value factor for each of these five years. Next step, I'm going to do the present value of the dividend. I take the dividend and I divide it by my present value factor and I can drag that along. What I have done here is I've applied the net present value formula for each individual year's dividend payment or cash flow. And so I now have the present value of dividends that I expect to be paid in year one is this. The present value of the dividend that I expect to receive in year five is this. This example, I'm assuming the business is not going to pay any dividends after year five. This is the terminal value is going to be equal to zero. So I've said the forecast dividend here, I've put a zero. The terminal value, the present value of the terminal value, I don't need to do it because I'm expecting my terminal value to be zero. This is unlikely to occur for Gale Pacific. This is likely to occur for something like a fixed life asset. A gold mine that has run out of gold will not pay any more dividends. Some sort of strategic alliance between two businesses that is going to last for five years, we could do a dividend expectation of zero after that. So then the total equity value, I'm going to take the sum of all my present values. So that is my total equity value. The theory of the dividend discount model is you take the present value of each dividend and you add them up to get the total value of equity. I've got each year's dividend forecast. I have taken the present value calculation of each of those dividends and I add them all up. So the present value of all my future dividends is I've got my number of shares outstanding from the Gale Pacific annual report. I've got the estimate of the price per share here now. The total value of equity divided by the number of shares outstanding gives me a price per share. This model estimated the price per share of Gale Pacific would be 5.4 cents if these forecast dividends are accurate and if they never pay a dividend after year five. The current share price is 14.5 cents. So if we we're an equity analyst, we'd make a sell recommendation. Our valuation is much lower than the company's shares are actually selling for. So we'd recommend investors sell it because it's currently overpriced. Now, the big caveat here, this is not investment advice. This is clearly just showing you how to do the valuation model in the spreadsheet. This forecast assumption is highly unlikely to occur for this business. So I'm not actually making investment advice here. We're just learning how to apply the valuation model. Now we're moving on to the dividend discount model using the terminal value with perpetuity. So this terminal value assumption assumes that we have our forecast dividends in year one, two, three, four, and five. And then from year six until forever, I'm going to assume that we continue paying dividends, but the dividend is going to be the same as it was in year five forever. So Gale Pacific are going to pay a $3,956.26 dividend every year from year six out until infinity. So this would be the perpetuity. So this is my, so here I'm assuming that it's the same as last year's dividend. So no growth in dividend, year five and year six dividends the same. So I now need to calculate the terminal value here. The terminal value, I take next year's dividend and I divide it by my cost of equity capital. This is called a perpetuity calculation. So I now have a value in year five, I have estimated my terminal value is worth 52,056 point. This is a year five value. So I now need to do the present value of the terminal value. So I'm going to take my terminal value and I'm going to divide it by the discount factor for year five. Just like I've got this year five dividend here, I divided through by the discount factor to get the present value of year five's dividend. My terminal value, I've calculated in year five. So I need to divide it through by the year five discount factor to get the present value of that terminal value. So now my total value of equity is equal to the sum of all the present values of the dividends plus the present value of the terminal value as well. So I now have the total value of equity. I divide through by the number of shares and I calculate my price per share. This time we're estimating the price per share is 18 cents per share, which is higher than the current price. So that would be a buy recommendation. And again, this is not investment advice. I'm not actually telling you to go out and buy these shares. I'm saying if these dividend 
forecasts were accurate and we had a company that paid this dividend in perpetuity, this would be the present value of those dividend payouts. Our final dividend model is taking into account that often companies will continue growing their dividends into the future. So this is the dividend discount model with growth in the terminal value. So the same setup as the previous two examples, but this time for the forecast dividends, I'm going to say year five's dividend, and I'm going to multiply it by one plus my growth rate. And here I've chosen a growth rate of 2%. I think Gale Pacific will continue growing their dividends by 2% forever. And that might be similar to about the rate of GDP growth. So they're going to continue growing at the same rate as the a broader economy. Okay, so that, that's our assumption there. So I now have my year six dividend forecast. It is 2% higher than my year five forecast. I need to do the perfect, I need to do the terminal value calculation now. So I'm going to take my year six dividend forecast and I'm going to divide it by my cost of capital minus my growth rate. So the terminal value here is now over 72,000. It is much higher than the previous example where we had 0% growth because we're assuming every year the dividend is going to go up by 2%. This was calculated in year five. So my terminal value needs to be discounted back by my year five discount factor. So I now have the present value of the terminal value with growth and the present value of each of the five years of dividends forecast. So my total equity value, I sum up all the present values of dividends plus the present value of the terminal value. We have now calculated the share price to be 22.9 cents per share, which is significantly higher than the current share price. So if we were equity analysts, we would issue a buyer recommendation saying that this company is undervalued. Caveat again, this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you to actually go out and buy the shares in this company. This is just a demonstration of if these forecast cash flows were to be present valued at this discount rate, this is the price we would be willing to pay for that company. So to summarize what we've just done, we've looked at price multiples for Gale Pacific and we've looked at the dividend discount model. We've taken into account three different terminal value assumptions for the Gale Pacific example. The most likely one that I think would actually apply to Gale Pacific would be this example, that we would assume that this business continues into the future and that they continue to grow at least at like one or two percent similar to the broader economy. I don't see any reason why Gale Pacific would suddenly cut their dividend to zero in five years time. And I don't see why they would suddenly be stuck at the same dividend forever. So for this particular company, I would assume that this 2% growth rate would be starting to get towards a reasonable estimation of their uh, dividend growth into the future. So this would probably be the model that I would use for my company for the dividend discount rate. But when you do your assignment, you have to make an assumption which terminal value assumption is most likely to be relevant to the company you are valuing. And that's going to take into account all the prior knowledge you have of the company and their likely growth into the future. To practice these models, to make sure you have plenty of opportunity to practice them, at the end of the lecture slides, there are some practice questions for you to look at. So Anna, Peter and Charles's company, we've got some practice questions for you. And the slides will also be available on UTS Online for you to have a look at. So that's all for me today. Thank you very much. And I'll see you guys next time.